I think one of the things I'm most passionate about is people. I always say that I'm a freak about people and I can't get enough of them. Um, but in conjunction with that is community. A lot of the work that I try to do, whether it's personal or professional or otherwise, is connecting people and connecting them into the community. And I think a lot of people, most people, right, everyone just wants to belong and feel like they fit somewhere. And so I'm constantly trying to make sure that, especially when we have new people joining our community, that we're finding places for them to belong, finding places for them to fit. Sometimes that means I'm connecting them to um, an organization or volunteer opportunities, or sometimes it means I'm inviting them to happy hour. It just depends, but always trying to make connections with people and then connect them back to the greater community. I think one of the biggest challenges for me when it comes to leadership and something that I still am trying to figure out is um, age and youth and um, living in this community with leaders who have um, been at the helm of businesses or running organizations for 30, 40, 50 years. Um, my own president CEO has led our phenomenal organization for almost 30 years now and has done a great job doing it. So coming in and being given a seat at the table and then trying to figure out what to do with that and knowing that I'm young, but also knowing that there's things that I bring, different perspectives. I think figuring out that whole balance and figuring out what to do with that um, has, been a big, has been a big challenge for me and it continues to be something that I work on and try to figure out. I think a good leader is empathetic and compassionate. I think a good leader listens um, something I've been thinking about a lot lately, I think good leaders trust themselves. Um, trust themselves to make decisions, trust themselves once they make decisions, but I think that's a, that's a quality that we don't think about a whole lot. Um, I think great leaders also know how to stay in their own lane, right? They, they figure out what's most important, they figure out what their objectives are, they take care of that, and then they also trust the people around them um, to do what they're supposed to do and to do what they're gifted to do as well. So I guess a lot of trust. I think a lot of my understanding of leadership has come through observing others. So I've had the luxury of working for some really phenomenal people in my life. Um, at the city of Wyoming, the city manager and the deputy city manager that I worked for there. Really big visionary people who could see the big picture, not get stuck in the details, and always figure out how to move things along. They were very tactical, um, always thinking three steps ahead, like a game of chess, and figuring out what's, what's the long-term goal here, and how does today's challenges or today's opportunities play into that. Um, and my work here at The Right Place, everyone knows um, our president and CEO, Birgit Close, also a phenomenal leader. Um, she, too, has the ability to think very tactically and strategically, um, and so I've been able to witness and to learn and to observe the different ways that they do things, and that's been incredibly helpful. Um, of course, through the Leadership Academy, I've spent plenty of years with this organization, um, always reading and just really being open to the world that's around you and um, finding out how are other people doing things, what are best practices. I often forget that leadership, that there's things you can do to to educate yourself about leadership. It doesn't just mean that you have to be a president or a CEO, but there's things you can be doing along the way to learn and to learn from others. So a lot of observing, a lot of reading, and then just critical self-assessment along the way too to sort of find those three pieces together. Um, for my wheelhouse talk, I wanna talk a bit about my journey and how I've gotten to where I have. I have a lot of students who talk to me, other community members, people who say, oh my gosh, you know, you've gotten to do so many great things and, um, and travel and see the world and you've been given a lot of great opportunities. How do I get there? What steps should I be taking? And so I want to talk a little bit about that, um, especially for our, um, our fellows, right? And talk about what can I be doing right now? Maybe I'm 23 or maybe I'm 25 and I want to be a leader, and I think I have those capabilities, but what should I be doing? So I really want to talk about what are the logical steps, right? I think it's hard these days because we see, we see CEOs and we see founders of startups who are 25 and 26 and 27 and 
there's a lot of days when I wake up and I think, why, why am I not a president by now? Or why am I not a VP of something? And I think there's plenty of time to get there. Um, but right now it's really time to be adding more skills, building relationships, and doing other things. And I want to remind our fellows and others that there's some time that we need to take in between. And that we probably need to give ourselves a break and allow ourselves to get where we're going. And that it doesn't have to be overnight. So I want to talk about some of those things that can happen in between and in the middle. Things that we can always be working on that I think will quite naturally lead people to leadership positions.